Welcome to my craft room. I'm so grateful you stopped in to visit with me today. I'm Heidi Sambel with Heidi Sambel DIY. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about five fun farmhouse projects using Dollar Tree supplies. All right, now let's get crafting. We are going to take this flower garden bucket as well as some of these florals and a piece of foam core and some black and white gingham ribbon. Go ahead and take your foam piece and put in some E6000 and some hot glue and pop that right down into your pot. Now we're gonna take that bucket and we're gonna flatten one of the sides so that we can use this as a darling wreath to be able to hang up on a hook on a door somewhere at your home. Now you can see here that it's nice and flat so when you go to put it on a door, it's laying evenly and that you can see the front of the bucket nicely and it's not leaning forward oddly. And then it like rocks around on the door. Now I'm taking some different lavender colors, dark and light purple, as well as this blue. I really like that blue in there with it, but you can put whatever florals in here you want. It's just the idea of taking the bucket, flattening it, and then putting in whatever florals that you prefer for your home. Now I'm gonna take some of this gingham ribbon and I've decided that I was going to loop it on each handle because I wanted the handle part to look finished and cleaned. So I looped it and then pulled up those ribbons and tied it in a knot at the top. Those tails that were extra on there, I'm just gonna let them kinda dangle down, look really pretty, kinda scrunch them around and give them a nice clean cut on the end. Add a bow and at this point, it's ready to be hung up on a door for your home. For this DIY, we are gonna be taking two of these wire football wreath forms, one of these galvanized, I almost call them bottle cap large metal plaques, some of these wood finials. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. We're gonna be using one of them. And then the last thing, this candle stem holder from the home decor section. We're also gonna be using some zip ties, but I'll show those in a little bit. Now we're gonna start by taking some wire cutters and we're gonna cut off the bottom part of the football form. You can see right here where I'm cutting it, we're gonna get rid of that first junction. And now once we've got both of those football forms cut, we're gonna take six zip ties and we're gonna start zip tying these together to create a cage. This is the easiest project and it has such a beautiful farmhouse high-end look. Go ahead by zipping the sides at the bottom in the middle and then two at the top. And I like to turn the zip ties in and snip off the extra. That way so it cleans it up and it looks really nice. When it comes to the top, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the zip tie ends there because we want to use that as some structure to be able to glue the finial on top of this little bird cage. So go ahead and add some hot glue inside of that finial and then just sneak that right on to the little zip ties at the top. And I'm gonna just come back in to reinforce some of that with more hot glue. I'm gonna come around and make sure that I'm getting it on the inside of the cage. This is gonna make sure it has a nice good lock on there so you can pick it up by that actual finial and it's not gonna pop off. Once that glue has completely dried, we're gonna go ahead Put it to the side and work on the base. Go ahead and take that galvanized tin. I'm using E6000 and hot glue for a short-term, long-term hold. Find the center point and go ahead and add on that candle stem to the bottom of that metal tray. Once that is glued nice and secure in place, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna spray paint the whole thing white, but you can spray paint it whatever color you would like. Now we're gonna do a little distressing and I'm gonna use this chestnut brown ink pad. Sometimes I don't always wanna get out paint and sometimes I just wanna do it really quick. So I'm gonna use one of these ink pads and I'm just gonna tap all along. Using a chestnut brown is a really great one that gives that rustic farmhouse look to it. I feel like after trying a bunch of different ink pads, this is the right color that gets that look. So I'm gonna link that ink pad down below. I just picked mine up from Amazon. Go ahead and tap it around and you can see that it's giving a beautiful rust look to it. 
You could skip this part if you want your project to look less distress. Now that's the end of the first project and we're gonna go on to this other part, which is this little birdhouse. And I wanted to dress up this little birdhouse. First I put some white paint on it and I wanted to show that these little birdhouses can be used in so many cute ways and they're so easy to turn them into something beautiful. So I'm gonna use some of this green moss I'm adding glue all over the entire top of the roof and the sides. And you can see here that I've laid out some moss over to the side. I have found that this is the easiest way to do it. You just take that hot glue on the roof and then just lay it right down in it and pat it around the sides. This is going to lessen the chances of burning your fingers with this stuff. Once you've got that roof completely covered, all around the sides, all around the edging of the roof. I'm now gonna just tidy this up really quick. I always have the hardest time moving forward in projects if I don't clean this or the Spanish moss up before I go to the next part. So you're gonna see me dusting up really quick. And now I'm gonna take my ink pad again. And I'm just gonna tap around that little birdhouse, giving it some distressing so it goes nicely with the bird cage. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just style this up to show you all how cute it can be. You can put whatever you want in here, a candle, some actual little birds, whatever you want. But I'm gonna use this little birdhouse to show that these little birdhouses are just so adorable in projects like this, that when they come together, it looks so beautiful for a home. So I'm gonna just put the birdhouse in. I'm gonna come in with some of that Spanish moss. I'm working it around the sides of the birdhouse and I'm not gluing it into place because during the fall time I could put a pumpkin in it, during Christmas I could put ornaments in it. So much potential. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in some summer type flowers, some greenery, and at the very bottom I'm gonna add a gingham bow. I'm not gluing it into place so I could switch out the bow as I want to throughout the year, but this is for a summer project. And all I have to do left is just zhuzh my bow a little bit and it's ready to be displayed. I love finding vintage goodies and something I've been trying to hunt down and have not been able to find has been an old auction sign. So I decided to make one myself. I found these chalkboard frames and I loved the shape on them and I'm taking down a painter stick that's cut down from it being a very long yard stick and I'm going to just simply glue that in between these two frames. It's actually the perfect size. So make sure when you're gluing it down though, you're gonna see here in a second, I put the two pieces together and then realized I didn't put glue on the backside where the chalkboard part was. So I had to pull it back up again. <laughs> it happens, sometimes you just get moving and you forget to glue certain things. So I went ahead and glued those two signs onto this handle and I went ahead and patched those holes on the chalkboard signs because it used to have twine on those holes. And now I'm going to take this wood strip, a bunch of you told me what it was called and I forgot it again, but I'm gonna link it down below. This stuff is so cool, it's like wood ribbon. That's what I'm gonna call it from now, I'm just gonna call it wood ribbon. But I know that it's used for building cabinets. That's what somebody told me and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So I'm gonna use this stuff to conceal that this was two separate signs, two chalkboard signs. I'm gonna glue it and hug that all the way around the whole chalkboard sign. This is going to really make it look like a vintage, really cool old auction sign. And this would be really fun if you have some fun baby showers or bachelorette parties to do this for yes and no signs. People can ask them questions and answer it, but I'm gonna be using it where I'm gonna paint on a number in just a second. But you can see here, I'm just following along that edge of these two frames, and I'm just taking my time gluing it on. Once you get all the way around the whole frame, cut off where the ending point is, and you've got this beautiful 
looking finished piece that looks like an auction sign, which I'm just like, I, I don't know why I thought this one was really cool to share today, just because it's different. Now go ahead and paint it whatever color you want. I went with a pretty white, nice and crisp, but I'm obviously going to make it look very farmhouse. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some painter's tape and some washi tape. I'm creating some different stripes because I wanted to bring in a really pretty sage green color. I'm loving that color right now. That and a French blue. It's just, I don't know, my style. I really love French blue and sage green. Go ahead and pull off that painter's tape and washi tape. Once that's dry, you can go ahead and paint on or vinyl on, whatever you want to do. Or stencil too, you can do that too. Go ahead and put on whatever number you want on your sign. You could also put a letter on for your monogram for your family. I'm going to go with five because there's five members in my house. And I'm going to go ahead and now just distress it. And you've got yourself a really cool vintage piece for your home. Start by picking up a pack of painter sticks. When I pick mine up from my home improvement store, they have 10 in a pack, which is perfect. And we're gonna line them all out. I'm lining them up here on my cutting mat where you can see that they're an inch spaced apart. Now at this point, I'm gonna figure out the height that I want these painter sticks to be. The middle point is going to be the highest and then it's gonna come down in evens after that, or I guess odds, because in the next two, which would make three, then you can see they're staggering down one by one until you've got four lower on one side and four lower on the other side where they're equal. Then I'm gonna glue them together with some of these larger tongue depressor sticks that, well, they're like jumbos. I picked these up from Walmart. You're gonna go ahead and glue these down, four pieces on the back, so they all become one big unit because we're making a picket fence gate door. All right, now we're going to take some of these stacking tumbling blocks from the Dollar Tree, glue two together and then another two, and then bring those four pieces all together as one long unit. You're going to repeat that four times. Once you've got four of them done, you're going to be using those for the legs of our door gate. We want to be able to make sure it can stand upright. Now go ahead and put some hot glue to bring them together on the front and the back side. And you can see here when I went to put it down, I decided to add even more hot glue because there is a bit of a gap and you want that glue to come together. So once you've got that all on there, nice and situated, you can take it outside and spray paint it whatever color you want. Now I love a white picket fence, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint my white. Now I want my fence to look like it's got layers of paint on it that has been weathered over the years. So I'm gonna start by giving it some distressing and you can see I came in pretty heavy. For me, this is actually heavy. I know for distressed rustic farmhouse lovers, this is not heavy, this is kind of light. But I came in for what I say is heavy and now I'm going to use some of this crackle paint. I'll make sure to link it down below but I just picked this up from Joann's. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put a nice coat of that all over because once it's dry, then I come back in with more white paint and you can see I'm putting on that white paint nice and thick. The thicker, the better with this crackle paint stuff that I just put on because then the paint starts to crack and it makes the fence look like it's really weathered from being outside. I put it aside to let it dry and to do its magic. And then I decided to come in with some of this leaf garland and I'm gonna just keep wrapping it and coiling it around until I get a nice little wreath. You don't have to do this part, but I thought it would be so sweet to put a wreath on the gate door. And then I'm gonna just add a little gingham bow, make sure that the tails are not too long, so I'm gonna trim those down some. And then, so that I can change the bow, I'm only putting hot glue at the very top of the wreath. That way I can lift up the bow when I want to and I can change it out for different seasons and it'll last me longer than just one season. Now go ahead and pick up a little handle for your gate door and then a couple of hinges. And I just picked these up from my home improvement store. 
glue those down into place and then you want to make sure you don't see that hot glue so I'm going to come back in once it's dry with some black paint to tap inside where the hot glue dots came through and with that you have a whimsical gate door to display for your season. I'm just so grateful you came to visit with me today in my craft room. I hope you give some of these a try because crafting is just so good for the heart and so good for all sorts of things like anxiety or stress levels. I love crafting so much. So I hope you will give some of these ideas a try. I'm going to recommend this video. If you enjoyed this, you might also enjoy this video. Thanks so much again for coming to visit with me today. And until the next episode, bye friends.